made and I bow into the created. Now I can stand bold in my heart and mind is sober. Looking to see a sign, my staff turned to a cobra. With magic, they did the same. Refused to fear his name. Hearts remain hard to their firstborns were slain. The knowledge you have is vain. Chakras and Kundalini's, Kabbalah, Tree of Life, Witchcraft and Genies, Mystery School teaching. Of course, it gotta be right. You know it all. Somebody how gain eternal life. Were you there when he made the earth? When he formed man's bones, only used the dirt. Were you there when he made the planets? Please tell me how he did it if you understand it. Were you there when he made the heavens? And all their array rested on the seventh. All you have is speculation and theories. Gave us basic commands, we comprehend them clearly. What's the purpose of living? What's the purpose of dying? Who do you believe when everybody is lying? How do you wait fire? Count the sands of the seas. Tell me how many stars throughout the galaxy. Some things only I know. If questions linger in your mind till your eyes close. But here's something you can understand. Fear your his commands to do it your man. Says, repeat that. Uh, repeat the question one more time. I apologize. Um, so I was. I read the full content of the yeah. of Monica three, and then I was thinking of the like the pastors today and how they don't teach the full content of it, right? And why they're using it as a tithe instead of them telling them what what the whole chapter is for. And a lot of people in the church, like myself, I didn't read it when I was in church. I mm. just knew like that was the part of Monica three where Will and me and Rob got and you're supposed to pay your tithes. Mm -hmm. So do you think they're skipping that part and keeping that part out because they don't want people to have like recognition of turning back? Because he's telling them to turn back and repent in this chapter as well. And to turn yeah. back to his laws. Yeah, I don't know if it's that deep. I mean, I, I I think that's the case that that um I think hmm, I, I don't like making blanket statements because I know there's always an exception to the rule. So I won't say all pastors, but I think that pastors that know realize that if they read the chapter in context, um you're gonna have to explain some things that you that you're kind of dancing around. Um, that being said, I don't know that all pastors read the Bible in, in, yeah, the Bible in full and the chapter in context. So what I understand about seminary school is that in seminary school, sometimes not, not every seminary school is the same. So let me be honest and clear about that. But in seminary school, a lot of times <clears throat> you're taught historical teaching points. So the common thoughts of the church fathers and the church founders, and when I say church fathers and the church founders, I mean uh, Clement and those people who they're talking about um, were in charge of the direction of the church after the death of the Messiah. Uh, I'm not even talking about Paul uh, and, and Peter and James and them. I'm talking about those who were around during the time of the Council of Trent, uh, the councils of Trent, there was more than one, the councils of Nicaea, uh, when they were ordering uh, the church and organizing the church and deciding what documents were gonna be kept, what documents were not gonna be considered Canaan and what teaching points they were, they were gonna agree upon. And so seminary school, as I understand it, is a system of just like uh, the what's the word we use when we talk about the Catholic Church? Uh, the no, the the word the the movement. Oh, oh um, no. The anyway, uh, similar to the Catechism. So, but that's not the one I was looking for. But yeah, no. Okay, so similar to the Catechism. Uh, the Pope was leading the ecumenical. ecumenical movement. Thank you. That's the word I'm looking for. 
similar to the ecumenical movement, um, it's it's an agreed upon set of teachings, right? And so in seminary school, they're teaching you what the teachings have been, and that's been passed down generation, generation, generation. So it's not really, you know, let's read this and see what it means. It's let me give you this excerpt and tell you what it means, and this is what you should teach. So I, I believe some pastors may not know because they don't really dig that deep into it, but I believe some pastors do know. Um, the, the, the thing that we've come to understand about the church as we know it right now is that it's a business. And so things are streamlined to keep the money flowing in and keep the people flowing in and to mitigate the, out, the outflow of people and money. Uh, and so with that understanding, I think that's why they don't worry about getting further into what Malachi may really be saying, because it's not, it's not um, productive to their bottom line, if that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, because when I, just from reading, because even in this chapter, he says, I do not change. So just from constantly like reading his word and he always saying, I do not change. I do not change. Do this, do this. I do not change. Yep. And we, and it still gets skipped over. It's just like, it blows my mind. I think so. And I know I'm not, I'm not going to go back two, three years of people blowing my mind. I'm not because mm -hmm. they're going to keep on doing it until the day I leave this earth. It's just crazy because it's like, if you just read up just a little bit and he tell you how to turn back to him, if you yep. go up just Three verses, he tell you how to turn back. But y'all skip all the way down to verse eight. It's just, it's, I don't know. Yep. I'm not going to say it, it's, but it does. It blows that's, my mind. That's the, that's the talking point. Just like, you know, um, just like politicians. That's the talking point. That's the point that they want to hit in order to get you to do um, instinctively what they need you to do, which is pay your tithes. Everything else is a, is, is a side note and is... Uh, Unimportant. Yeah. That's a good question though. Anybody else before we jump into this? Real, can we get a quick mic check from you? And thank you in advance for being my reader. Never had no problems jumping in there and reading for me. Here for you, Daddy. We so always have together, baby. Appreciate it. Can y'all hear real? Okay. Yes. Okay, good deal. I have one question before we start. And I oh, think yeah. I put this in our in our Colty chat. Did anybody ever watch Babylon AD? I did. I think we did. Is that the one with Vin Diesel? Yeah. Yeah, I think we did. That yeah. was my first that was my first time watching that movie. I was sitting here like my mouth wide open. Cause I'm like, whoa. I couldn't believe it. I'm said they put it right on TV. But the only thing is they made Russia Babylon and made America the kingdom or some type of way. I don't know. Get it? Yeah. I'll have to watch it again. It's been a while since I saw it, but I do uh I do remember the, the movie in general. Yeah, because I'm like, I don't watch stuff like that. I'm not watching it, but then I end up watching it. Can it you good. text it in the in the chat for a uh Shanta? Uh Shatana. Yes. Uh yeah, she was asking what's the name of Babylon A D. Okay. All right. Shabbat Shalom. Shalom. Look, I go through this just in case whoever's watching. So I say Shalom, Shalom, and Shalom. I know Bruce pronounced it every different kind of way. To everybody who's joining us today, uh, I pray that you have had a blessed Shabbat so far. Welcome to another edition uh, or part of the Seeking the Priesthood study. And this is part 13. I don't know how many parts it's going to be, family, in, honest, in all honesty. I don't know how many parts this is going to be. Um, we're just going to keep going until we get to where you guys are revealing what you need to reveal, okay? So um, we're going to be reading today from the Standard 66. Whatever translation you have is fine. We read from, um, commonly, the Scriptures translation. But if you have a KJV, if you have a 1611, if you got a Gideon, uh, whatever you have is all good. Um, we will also be reading a little bit from the book of Jasher. 
we will also be reading a little bit from the Book of Jubilees. And these are books. Um, so Jubilees and Jashers are books that we believe coincide with and 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 confirm or are confirmed by the standard 66. Um, if you need a link to read along with us, um, does someone have the link handy where you can post it in the chat for anybody that doesn't have it? If not, I can try to pull it up. Hold on, appreciate that. And if someone wouldn't mind posting um, scriptures as we read them, I'll also share my screen. Um, that would be appreciated as well. Torah in advance. Okay, hallelujah. Torah says, excuse me. So um, it's been a few weeks since we did the seeking of priesthood, and I apologize. Uh, life happens. Uh, but at the same time, we did have an opportunity to go over um, the wilderness study. So that was good. Um, so just to catch us up, the last couple of videos that we did on the priesthood, we were dealing with the covenants, right? We're dealing with the covenants that were passed from um, Abraham to Isaac and Jacob. We saw them initially established also with uh, Adam and with uh, Seth and so on and so forth. But specifically, we're talking about Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. We can also look at these covenants as blessings because Yah said he was blessing these people because of uh, their obedience and because of Abraham's obedience specifically. Um, so we saw them being passed from Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and to Jacob. Um, we saw the contention between Isaac and Ishmael. We saw how Abraham loved both, but we also saw how Ishmael was not so much concern, concerned with studying the ways of Yah, and he chose not to go under the tutelage of Noah and Shem. Also, we confirm that the covenant or the blessings were again passed to Jacob and his posterity, even used the Quran, and we, we looked at several different witnesses from the Quran that showed and proved and confirmed that that Jacob was who Yah conferred prophecy unto and his posterity. Y'all remember that? Okay. Um, we also saw that Esau sold his birthright. We looked at kind of the background as to why he may have done that uh, because he was in fear of Nimrod's men being in pursuit of him, that they were coming to kill him because he had killed Nimrod. We also saw that he had taken Nimrod's garments the ones that were given to him by Ham, that were in fact stolen, that most likely should have been passed from Shem, eventually to Abraham, Isaac, and of course to Jacob. Now, we're going to pick up from there. We're going to confirm the passing of the blessings portion of the covenant to Jacob and also to his 12 sons. So we're going to pick up today in the book of Genesis chapter 27. And I'll go ahead and share my screen with you guys. We're going to Genesis 27. So we are going Genesis 27, 11 to 29. Genesis 27, 11 to 29, whenever you're ready. And Yaakov said to Rebekah, his mother, See, Esau, my brother, is a hairy man, and I am a smooth-skinned man. What if my father touches me? Then I shall be like a deceiver in his eyes and shall bring a curse on myself and not a blessing. So just real quick, so backing up just a little bit here, um, you guys should be familiar with this story, but what's happening here is Jacob, uh, I apologize, uh, Isaac is ready to bless his son. And so he tells Esau to go and get some of the venison that he's famous for, hunting, skinning, cleaning, and cooking. He says, he tells his son, Esau, go get some of your venison that you're famous for, cook it up for me, and I will bless you as the oldest son. Remember, this is this is our culture that the oldest son generally 
gets the blessing or the inheritance. Um, and so at this state in his life, though, Isaac's eyes are growing dim. And what scripture means when it talks about that is, is just, it's getting harder for him to see. So he's going by his other senses to recognize who's who. And Rebecca has already been pulled to the side. First of all, she got the word from the angel that visited her. But then Abraham also, in observing his, his grandchildren, went to Rebecca and confirmed even what the, what the angel said, which is, Jacob is the one between your two sons who the most high is blessing. And so let's make sure that when the blessings come down, Jacob is the one that's getting the inheritance. So Rebecca is operating on the word of the Melachim and the word of Abraham, who she knows to be in the in the in the righteous order of what Yah is doing. Uh, not that Isaac was not a righteous individual. It says that he was a righteous man, and he was a and he was a uh, uh, a complete man. But he favored his son Esau to a degree. He favored him because he was his oldest, and he favored him because he was a strong man and a hunter and all that. Look like you want to add something. Okay. So that's where we're at. So Rebecca has told her son, look, your, your, your father wants this stew so that he can bless. Go out and get the venison and bring it to me, and I'm going to cook it the way your brother cooks it, but better because I'm mama, of course. I'm the one to tell him. I'm the one to tell him. Okay. And uh, you're going to take it to your father so that he can bless you. And this was Jacob's response. And so go ahead from there. But his mother said to him, let your curse be on me, my son. Only obey my voice and go and get them for me. And he went and fetched them and brought them to his mother. And his mother made a tasty dish such as his father loved. Muy delicioso. And Ripka took the best garments of her eldest son Esau, mm -hmm. which was which were with her in her house, and put them on Jacob, her younger son. And she put the skins of the young goats on his hand and on the smooth parts of his neck. Then she gave the tasty dish and and the bread which she had prepared into into the hand of her son I, Jacob. And he went to his father and said, "My father." And he said, "Here I am." Who are you, my son? And Jacob said to his father, I am Esau, your firstborn, and I have done as you said to me. Please rise, sit, and eat my wild game, so that you bring, so that your being might be blessed in me, so that your being might bless me. But Isaac said to his son, How is it that you have found it so quickly, my son? And he said, <laughs> Because Yahuwah, your Elohim, brought it to me. Mm -hmm. Then Isaac said to Jacob, please come near so that I feel you, my son, whether you truly are my son Esau or not. Pause for a second. Uh, real quick, do you guys have an echo on the mic? Just want to make sure. We're in Genesis 27, verse 20. All right, Rip. Hold on. Then Isaac said to Jacob, okay, and, okay. and then Jacob went near to Isaac, his father, and felt him and said, the voice is the voice of Jacob, but the hands are the hands of Esau. Mm -hmm. And he did not recognize him, for his hands were hairy like his brother Esau's hands, and he blessed him. I tend to think that Esau might have had a clue. Like, I, I think Esau might have known that, uh, Isaac, I believe, thank you. I believe Isaac might have had a clue that Jacob might have been the one he was dealing with. I don't know. That's my opinion. Uh, because he said, he said, look, your voice sound like Jacob. Uh, you feel like Esau, but your voice sound like Jacob. Are you sure it's you? Come here, let me, let me smell you. Mm, you got children. You know y'all children smell different. Let's be honest. Your children smell different? Uh, Can you hug one child and smell that that's yeah. That particular child and hug another child. Ooh, yeah. Go get a shower, boy. <laughs> and you know which child that is. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, that was Esau. <laughs> Esau Harry self didn't need a shower fairly often. He was a man of the field. Okay. So yeah, he said, Yeah, you sound like Jacob, but today you smell like Esau. Oh, Let's let, but but come on. That's what he said. Come on. 
Uh, <laughs> and so he says, are you truly my son, Esau? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And he said, I am. And he said, bring it near to me and let me eat of it, my, of my son's wild game. So that my being might be but so that my being might bless you. Mm -hmm. So he brought it near to him and he ate. And he brought him wine and he drank. Mm -hmm. And his father Isaac said to him, Please come near and kiss me, my son. Mm -hmm. And he came near and kissed him, and he smelled the smell of his garments. Mm -hmm. And then he blessed him and said, See, the smell of my son is like the smell of the field which Yahuwah has blessed. Mm -hmm. And Elohim give you to the dew of the heavens and give you the dew of the heavens of the fatness of the earth and plenty of grain and wine. Mm -hmm. Let peoples serve you and nations bow down to you. Be master over your brothers and let your mother's sons bow down to you. Curse be to those cursing you and bless me to those blessing you. Okay, hallelujah. So we have here a situation where similar to something we were talking about last night. Um, the father here being in the position of technically the, the, the priesthood, right? The high priest in this priesthood situation. And his son is bringing him the best of what he has to offer, right? And he's saying, bring me, we're going to break bread. And when you bring to me and I, and I take of what you're bringing as you're offering to me, I'm going to bless you and Yahuwah is going to bless you. And I'm asking Yahuwah to bless you because I'm the one that's inter intercessing and saying you deserve of this blessing. That's what's happening here. Uh, let's read it from uh, Jasher. Let's go to Jasher 27, verse 8. Jasher 27 and 8. I'm gonna read 8 through 10. Whenever you're ready. I can read it in a moment too. No, I can't. Okay. Okay. Eight through ten. Eight through ten. Yeah. And Esau. Isaac. Okay. Wait, I'm sorry. No, that's cool. And Isaac grows up, you and he ate. Esau too? You Does he? Esau too? Okay. Okay, okay. Maybe I'm in the wrong place. Let me double check. Okay. Let me double check. I could be wrong. Uh, let's say Jash 27, 8 through 10. Mm -hmm. I apologize, fam. Give me a second. <laughs> okay, you're right. That is wrong. Um, give me a second, fam. Jasher 29. I'm so sorry. Jasher 29, 8 through 10. Salakia, fam. I apologize. And Isaac rose up and he ate and he drank. Mm -hmm. And his heart was comforted and he blessed Jacob and Jacob went away from his father. Mm -hmm. And as soon as Isaac had blessed Jacob and he had gone away from him, behold, Esau came from his hunt from the field. And he also made savory meat and brought it to his father to eat, therefore, thereof, and to bless him. Mm -hmm. Savory meat. Mm -hmm. And Isaac said unto Esau, and who was he that had taken vengeance and brought it to me? Venison. Mm -hmm. Venison. What was I saying? Vengeance. Vis, I don't know. Venison. Before. So venison is deer meat. Deer meat. Yeah. This was deer meat. So this is one of the, one of the games that Esau was known for hunting, among other things. So this was deer meat. Yeah. Uh, who had taken venison and brought it to me before thou camest, and whom I did bless? Mm -hmm. And Esau knew that his brother Jacob had done this. 
-hmm. And the anger of Esau was kindled against his brother Jacob, that he had acted thus toward him. And Esau said, Is he not rightly called Jacob? For he has sub supplanted me twice. So real quick, just remember that that's what Jacob's name means. Supplanted. That's exactly what his name means. We are in... Uh, she she just read the first part of verse 10. Okay. He took away my birthright, and now he has taken away my blessing. Mm -hmm. And Esau wept greatly. Mm -hmm. And when Isaac heard the voice of his son Esau weeping, Isaac said unto Esau, What can I do, my son? Thy brother came with sub subtly and took away thy blessing. And Esau hated his brother Jacob mm -hmm. on account of the blessing that his father had given him. Mm -hmm. And his anger was greatly roused against him. Great. Beautiful. Pause. Why does Esau hate Jacob? Type it in the chat. Why is there this big thing between Esau, or who we refer to as the Edomites, and Jacob today? There's your answer scripturally. You got your hands raised. You want to say what you, what you want to say? Because he think Jacob stole his birthright. Because he felt like Jacob got his birthright and his blessing. Hallelujah. Okay. And so when we asking ourselves, like I know we talked about, you know, a while back, that sister that had the TikTok post where she was like, I'm asking, I'm honestly asking, why does the world treat us like this? Uh, well, the curses is part of it and our disobedience. That's part of it. But here's the other part of it. There is a bloodline group of people who their blood remembers and their complete desire is to put their foot on your neck until you cease to exist. You have a natural born enemy at this point. And that's what the book says. Dang, for a meal, 100%, Iman, absolutely. Okay, picking up, we're going back to uh, Genesis 37. 37, oh, no, I apologize, Genesis 27, picking up at 37 through 40. Genesis 27, 37 through 40. Then Isaac answered and said to Esau, See, I have made him your master, and mm -hmm. all his brothers I have given to him as servants. Mm -hmm. And I have sustained him with the grain and wine. Mm -hmm. And what then shall I do for you, my son? And Esau said to his father, Have you only one blessing, my father? Do y'all remember, um, not to be funny, but I'll be honest, I'm probably going to insert this clip in here. <laughs> do y'all remember that? That video clip that somebody labeled the, the best cry ever. Yeah. When when the boy was telling his father, yes. his father wasn't around for him and he was crying. Yes. And it's in the middle of him crying, his father outcried him. Yeah. That's what I think about when I think about Esau crying. <laughs> <laughs> that man just opened up his mouth and was loud. And so he asking him at this point, so you ain't got nothing left? Like you gave him my birthright. You gave him the blessing that was supposed to be passed me. You ain't got nothing left of me. And this is his response. Um, and uh, you're at the okay, Bless me too, oh my father. Okay. And Esau lifted up his voice and wept. There we go. <laughs> 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 and Isaac, his father, answered and said to him, See, your dwelling is of the fatness of the earth mm -hmm. and of the dew of the heavens from above. Mm -hmm. And by your sword, you are to live mm -hmm. and serve your brother. Mm -hmm. And it shall be when you grow restless that you shall break his yoke from your neck. Now, that's a blessing. I mean, it literally says it's a blessing. But if you really think about what he's saying there, you're gonna live from the earth. You're gonna you're gonna you're gonna work hard. You're gonna live by your sword, which means you're probably gonna die by your sword. And then it says, 
And when you get tired of that, because I already said your brother's going to rule over you. Your brother going to rule over nations. And anybody that cursed your brother, they're going to be cursed. So you can curse them if you want to. But in turn, what's going to happen with you is you're going to reap the, the reciprocal effects, right? So he says, when you get tired of that, you're going to break his yoke from your neck. That happened in history. It happened already. But let's read a little bit further in Jubilees because Jubilees gets just a little bit more detail. Let's go to Jubilees 26 about that breaking of the yoke. Jubilees 26, we're going to read uh, 34 and 35. The book of Jubilees, chapter 26, verses 34 and 35. Whenever you're ready. Yeah, I see a lot of y'all saw that same clip I'm talking about. You said 34 and 35. Best cry ever. Okay. Okay, you ready? And, yeah. Okay. And by the sword without live, and thou will serve thy brother. Uh -huh. And it shall come to pass when thou becomest great and does shake his yoke from off thy neck, mm -hmm. thou shall sin a complete sin unto death. Mm. And thy seed shall be rooted out from under the heaven. Mm. And Esau kept threatening Jacob because of the blessing wherewith his father blessed him. And he said in his heart, may the days of mourning for my father now come so that I may slay my brother Jacob. Okay, so it's a lot there, right? So, so in this blessing that Isaac blessed Esau with, he said, yeah, you, you're going to live off the, the, the fatness of the earth and do of the heaven. And when you get tired of that, and when you become great, as it, as it says in this uh, rendition, it says when you become great and you shake his yoke from your neck, it's going to be by committing a sin that is so bad that it's going to be a sin unto death. And because of the sin that you commit in order to break his yoke from your neck, the reciprocal effect of that is that your seed will be rooted out from under the heaven. Jacob, I have loved. Esau, I have hated. And that didn't stop Esau. Did that stop Esau? No, nah, he wasn't scared. He kept on threatening Jacob. And he said at that point, I can't wait for my father to die. I can't wait for my father to die because as soon as he die, I'm going to kill you. That's what he said. As soon as my father die, it's grass. <laughs> I don't want to say that, but yeah. I'm going to get in it. I'm, 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 I'm going to get in it. That's what he said. That's wrong. Genesis 27, 41 through 45. Genesis chapter 27, verses 41 through 45. Okay. Everybody choosing up sides here, family. I know we we looking at this priesthood thing as it essentially only being two different choices in earth, two different spirits, two different sides, wherewith you need to choose where you're gonna stay in, in this walk. Okay, go ahead. And Esau hated Jacob because of the blessing with which his father had blessed him. Mm -hmm. And Esau said in his heart. The days of mourning my father draw near. Then I'm going to kill my brother Jacob. Mm -hmm. And the words of Esau, her older son, were reported to Ripka. And she sent and she called Jacob, her younger son, and said to him, See, your brother Esau comforts himself concerning you to kill you. Mm -hmm. And now, my son, listen to my voice and rise. Cling to my brother Laban in Haran. Mm -hmm. And stay with him a few days until your brother's wrath turns away. Mm -hmm. Until your brother's displeasure turns away from you and he forgets what you have done to him. And I shall send and bring you from there. Why should I be bereaved of you both in one day? Now, um, I, I always question that. What say, why should I lose two of you in one day? Jubilees clears that up. In Jubilees, it's just one verse. I read it, uh, if, you know, since it's just one. Jubilees 27 and 4 is talking about that same incident and it says, Jacob's response to her when he told him to run away from his brother was like, so you saying he going to kill me? And he said, 
I'm not afraid. If he wishes to kill me, I will kill him. That was Jacob's response. So a lot of people get this picture that, you know, Esau was big and bad and Jacob was only afraid. Jason, Jacob was afraid at certain points for good reason. Yeah, um, children and wife by the time. Yeah, but Jacob wasn't just a scary individual. Um, there's, there's, there's descriptions of Jacob in several places to say that Jacob was a warrior as well. Um, and that was his response. But his mother said, you know, look, do this, do this. I'm not trying to lose two sons in one day. Uh, and so that's where she was at with him. Uh, let's go to the book of Jasher, chapter 27. Jasher 27, we're going to read verses 11 and... Twelve. Jasher chapter twenty-seven, verses eleven and twelve. Whenever you're ready. Okay. Yeah, I'm not famous. I like slower than yours. Mm. Okay. It's, and Esau took those garments. Is that right? No. And Jacob was very much afraid of his brother Esau. Okay, maybe I got this wrong again. <laughs> see. Is that what you see in 28? Is that what you see in 28? No, that's the part of my memory. Okay, so no, I'm not going to guess. Let me just go see. Give me a second. Um, one second, fam. What did I say? 27? Mm -hmm. And what verse did I say? 11. No, you're right. That's not right. Sorry, Pat, one second. Mm. Jacob was very much afraid of his brother Esau. <clears throat> Let me find that. Acus 29, 11. 29, total. Appreciate that. Twenty-nine. There we go. Eleven. <clears throat> and we're going eleven and twelve. Appreciate that, fam. Hold on. Let me share my screen again real quick. Who was that? Thank you. I appreciate that, sis. Okay, there you go. Okay. And Jacob was very much afraid of his brother Esau, and he rose up and fled to the house of Eber, the son of Shem. And he concealed himself there on account of his brother. And Jacob was 63 years old when he went forth from the land of Canaan, mm -hmm. from Hebron. And Jacob was concealed in Eber's house 14 years on account of his brother Esau. And he there continued to learn the ways of Yahuwah and his commandments. That's key. It's, it's, it's constantly confirming the spirit that's on Jacob. Go ahead. And when Esau saw that Jacob had fled and escaped from him, and that Jacob had, and Jacob had cunningly obtained the blessing, then Esau grieved exceedingly, and he was also vexed at his father and mother. And he rose, and he also rose up and took his wife and went away from his father and mother to the land of Seir. Mm -hmm. And he dwelt there. Real and, quick, where's Seir? Uh, Petra. Around Petra. Mm -hmm. Okay, just making sure. Go ahead. Yeah. Um, <laughs> who was that in? Who was that now? That was in Petra? Uh, Moya. No, no, right there. Did you just read? 
Oh, that's that's Esau. That's Esau. That's Went to Petra. Okay. Um, All right, go ahead. Um, and he dwelt there. And Esau saw there a woman from amongst the daughters of Heth, uh -huh. whose name was Bosma, the daughter of Elon, the Hittite. Okay. And he took, you know, the cave people. Yeah. And he took her for a wife in addition to his first wife. And Esau called her name Adam, saying that the blessing had in that time passed from him. Beautiful. So now let's see what Esau's mother thought of this Canaanite. Uh, oh, my goodness. I didn't get to edit y'all. I apologize. No proofreading there. All right. Uh, so this was a Canaanite through Heth. Right? Let's see what she thought. Let's go to Jubilees 5. We're going to read 1 through 3. Jubilees chapter 5, 1 through 3. Okay. Jubilees chapter 5. Correct. No, 25. Oh, Sorry. Okay. 25, 1 through 3. Should start with, and in the second year of this week yeah. in Jubilees. Yep. Okay. Got one right. <laughs> and in the second year of this week, in this jubilee, Rebecca called Jacob her son and mm -hmm. spake unto him, saying, My son, do not take thee a wife of the daughters of Canaan. So these Hittites was also Canaanites. Well, I, I put that in my note, but I'm just saying, through Heth, these Hittites were also descendants of Canaan. Okay? As... Esau, thy brother, who took him two wives of the daughters of Canaan. Mm -hmm. And they have embittered my soul with all their unclean things. Mm. For all their deeds are fornication and lust, mm -hmm. and there is no righteousness in them, for their deeds are evil. And I, my son, love thee exceedingly, mm -hmm. and my heart and my affections bless thee every hour of the day, and I watch and, and watch of the night. Mm -hmm. And now, my son, hearken to my voice, and do the will of thy mother, and do not take thee a wife of the daughters of this land, mm -hmm. for only of the house of my father, and of my father's kindred. Thou shalt take thee a wife of the house of my father, and the Most High Yahuwah will bless you, and thy children shall be righteous, a righteous generation, and a set-apart seed. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Um, Genesis 27 and 46. Genesis chapter 27, verse 46 is going to confirm what you just read in Jubilees. Your life. Genesis chapter 27, verse 46. Whenever you're ready. And Ripkai said to Jacob, I am disgusted with my life because of the daughters of Heth. To Isaac, right? Oh, to Isaac, right, right, mm -hmm. right. If Jacob takes a wife from the daughters of Heth, like those, like these who are the daughters of this land, that is my life to me. What is what, what is, is my, my life, life worth? Yeah. What is it? My life may be, might as well be worth this. What what happened and, and what you what you would have to do to get the full background is read it from Jubilees, read it from Jasher. Um, these, he eventually wound up taking three. We're going to read about the third one he takes. Um, these wives that, that, um, uh, Esau took was probably worse than the wives that Ishmael took. And they was driving her back. And she basically pulled her son to the side and said, look, son, don't do what your brother did. You know, um, we'll get more into that. So, Isaac passes the blessings of Abraham. Said, Let your curse be on me. Yeah, she did. That's exactly what happened. She had to. She did. She had to watch her little heathen grandchildren grow up. Wow, because their mama was wild. Mm. Uh, so Isaac passes the blessings of Abraham not only to Jacob, since we're dealing with the covenants, right, but also unto all of his seeds, meaning the whole twelve tribes, now have the righteous blessing conferred upon them. So let's read that. Let's confirm that in scripture. Genesis 28, verses 1 through 4. We saw, we saw the blessing being passed from individual to individual. Now we see the blessing passed to the 12 patriarchs as, as a group. Okay? Uh, Genesis 28, 1, Eli. 
Genesis 28. Verses 1 through 4. The book of Genesis, chapter 28. Whenever you're ready. <laughs> Told her. And Isaac called Jacob and blessed him and commanded him and said to him, do not take a wife from the daughters of Canaan. Please, son, I can't hear your long mouth no more. I'm telling you. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm glad, I'm glad you said it though. It's, it's, it's obvious when we read it, when we read both uh, narrations of what happened, it's obvious that she had an issue. She told her son, but she also told her husband. And then her husband then confirms with his son, listen, do what your mother said, right? Um, I'm going to let you finish reading this, but I'm going to tell you a little bit more about what she did also. Go ahead with that. Arise and go to Pada Aram, to the house of Bethel, your mother's father, mm -hmm. and take a wife for yourself from there, mm -hmm. from the daughters of Laban, your mother's brother. Mm -hmm. And El shall I bless you and make you fruitful and increase you, and you shall become an assembly of peoples oh, yeah. and give you the blessing of Abraham to you and your seed with you so that you inherit the land of your sojournings, which Elohim gave to Abraham. Hallelujah. Okay, so in addition to um, Isaac blessing Jacob, which is what we just read here, Rebecca also blesses Jacob in, in the other reading. Uh, and she she goes through a long, extended and prolonged blessing, uh, recognizing him as a set apart individual and 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 uh, extending blessings unto him and his seed. So that they, if they continue in righteousness, will be a set apart seed of his as well. Um, in verse three, it says you shall become a an assembly of peoples. That word in the Hebrew is kahal. H6951, Kahal, from H6950, assemblage, usually, usually concrete, a company, a congregation, but also a multitude. You become a multitude of peoples, right? A nation. Here's confirmation. I don't want you to take my word for it. The book of Psalms, chapter 105, verse 6. The book of Psalms, chapter 105, verse 6. I'm going to give you three witnesses that these blessings were conferred upon the entire nation of Israel, not just Jacob, the individual. This priesthood is now passing to Jacob's lineage. Not just the individual Jacob is what I'm saying, to be clear. You ready? Okay. So just verse 6. Just verse 6. O seed of Abraham, his servant, children of Jacob, his chosen ones. Who's been spoken to here? The children of Jacob. The children of Jacob. The seed of Abraham, the children of Jacob, he calls in this verse his chosen ones. His chosen ones. Akoti Kimberly, you want to come to the mic? Yes, quick question. What was that word again? Um, um, and the number to it. Sorry. No, it's okay. The word was assembly in Genesis 28 and 3. Uh, the Hebrew Strong's concordance for it, if someone can text it in the room also, is H6951. And that word is kahal. Kahal. And it means a multitude. It also means assembly, but just to be clear, it means a multitude. And so part of that blessing that was received was um, Yahuwah, El Shaddai, the almighty power is what that translates to. Bless you and make you fruitful, increase you, and you shall become a multitude of righteous individuals, not just one is what it's saying, okay? Let's go to Exodus, the book of Exodus. We're going to uh, chapter three. We're going to read verses six and seven, second witness. The book of Exodus, chapter three, verses six and seven. No problems, it's all good. Whenever you're ready. And he said, I am Elohim, your father, 
the Elohim of Abraham, the Elohim of Jacob, I mean Isaac, and the Elohim of Jacob. And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look at Yahuwah. Mm -hmm. And Yahuwah said, I am indeed seen, I have indeed seen the oppression of my people who are in Mitzrayim. Mm -hmm. And I have heard their cry because of their slave drivers, for I know their sorrow. Beautiful. Who is Yahuwah referring to um, when he's talking about his people here in Mitzrayim? Seed of Jacob. He's he's saying the Elohim of Isaac, mm -hmm. the Elohim of Jacob, mm -hmm. and the Elohim of Abraham. Okay. So so he's so he's referring to the nation of Israel. We agree, right? Though the people who are in Egypt, who are being oppressed by Egypt, are the progenitors of uh, uh I'm sorry, the offspring mm -hmm. and the seed of the twelve sons of Jacob. And so these are the people who he is calling my people in verse seven. When he says, I have seen the oppression of my people. He said, I am the power, the Elohim or the power of Abraham. I was the power of Jacob. You've heard of me. You know me. You heard about me. I'm the power of Jacob. And I've seen the oppression of my people, Jacob's seed. That's what that's saying. Let's go to Isaiah 41. Isaiah 41. We're going to read verses 8 and 9. Third witness. Isaiah chapter 41, verses 8 and 9. Whenever you're ready. But you, Israel, are my servant, Jacob, whom I have chosen, the descendants of Abraham, whom lo who loved me, mm -hmm. whom I have strengthened from the ends of the earth. And call from its farthest parts and said to you, you are my servant. I have chosen you and I have not rejected you. Oh, yeah, I have chosen you. I have not rejected you. So he said, you, Israel, are my servant. How do we know he's not just talking about the individual Jacob whose name was changed to Israel? Well, he says, the descendants of Abraham. Then it says, uh... I have chosen you and not rejected you. I apologize. The, the confirmation of that is um, Exodus that we just read before this. Just talking about the group of his people referred to as Israel. The descendants, plural, in verse 8, of Abraham who loved me, the nation. So, moving on. Let's read how Esau responds to the fact that Isaac is now again Blessing Jacob and also Jacob's children. What's wrong? Ah, those the same two. Okay. Uh, Esau, how does Esau respond to the fact that Isaac is again blessing Jacob, but not just Jacob this time? We saw he blessed his children as well. Do I need to pause for a second? Thanks. Genesis 28, we're going to read 6 through 9. The book of Genesis, chapter 28, verses 6 through 9. Yeah, the book of Genesis, chapter 28, verses 6 through 9. Sorry, friend, give me one second. Okay, fine. We ready. <clears throat> and Esau saw that Isaac had blessed Jacob and sent him away to Padan Aram to take himself a wife from there. Mm -hmm. And that as he blessed him, he gave him a commandment saying, do not take a wife from the daughters of Canaan. Mm -hmm. And that Jacob had obeyed his father and his mother and had gone to Padan Aram. So he saw, he saw that he told him, don't take one of these women as a wife. And he saw that Jacob actually obeyed him. Okay, so what does he do? So Esau saw the daughters of Canaan did not please his father Isaac. Uh -huh. 
And Esau went to Ishmael and took Mahulith, the daughter of Ishmael, Abraham's son, the sister of Neb Neboiah, to be his wife, besides the wives he had. So now he got two Canaanite wives and an, Ishmael, an Ishmaelite wife. Congratulations, Esau. <laughs> <laughs> Overachiever he is. That was it. But this is one of those um, scriptures that some people see and say is proof that the error is Esau. So you have some Israelites that say Esau is the white man. And then you got some Arabs to say, or or um, the Greek, right? And then you have some to say that Esau is the Arab, the dragons of Arabia, right? In all honesty, fam, when you see how Ishmael mixed in with all of these people, because it gets even deeper than this, it gets even deeper than this, um, you have to understand that you cannot identify Esau by his skin color. Um, Esau is identified by his spirit. Esau is identified accurately in the way that he operates, in the way that he deals with us. Okay? More than likely, you got some Edomites that look just like you and me. More than likely, you got some Edomites that look like Ishmael. More than likely, you got some Edomites that look like the Romans and the Greeks and every other blend of person in the earth that there are because Ishmael mixed in with all of them. Uh, Ishmael did too, but yes, Esau is who I meant, correct. Um, and so we don't tend to get into those debates with people because you know a lot of times it's like, yeah, you're right. Um, I see that Esau mixed in with the Arabs, but that don't mean he didn't also mix in with Ketim who's known to be the Greeks, right? Uh, me and Ray were just talking earlier this morning um, about the, the fact that throughout history, humans were known to be melanated. You know, just as a general rule of thumb, it was created from the dust of the earth and the dirt and the mud. So humans were melanated to varying degrees I get it, but humankind were black and brown. It's another situation to figure out where, you know, so-called, because if we don't want to be called white, you really can't call people, I mean, if we don't want to be called black, you can't really call people white either. It's not a literal skin complexion. It's not a literal identifying marker. We're not literally black. They're not literally white. Uh, but just as a, as a familiar term, um, where these people came from, that's a different story. And then who they mixed in with, right? Um, there's a lot of mixing going on, fam. And so we get to a certain place in our walk and in our understanding and in our understanding of prophecy where it's less about the bloodline and it's more about who you give your allegiance to, if that makes sense. Because we got Israelites this wicked. Let's just be honest. And we got Gentiles that's trying to strive to be righteous. Let's just be honest. You know? Okay, let's go to the book of Jubilees. 27. Book of Jubilees, chapter 27. And we're going to go 13 through, uh, that might be 29. Let me preemptively say that, <laughs> since the other ones were off too. We're going to go through verse 25. First verse should read, and it came to pass after Jacob had risen, arisen to go to Mesopotamia. It's not 29. So try 27. Thirteen. Yeah. That one is correct. Okay. Well, hallelujah. So we're going thirteen through nineteen, I think. Okay. Thirteen through. I apologize. No, twenty-five. 
So 13 Yep. Okay. Whenever you ask. And it came to pass after Jacob had arisen to go to Mesopotamia that the spirit of Rebekah was breathed after her son and she wept. Uh -huh. And Isaac said to Rebekah, my sister, weep not on account of Jacob, my son, for he goeth in Shalom mm -hmm. and in Shalom he will return. Mm -hmm. And the most high Yahuwah will preserve him from all evil and will be with him for he will not forsake him all his days. For I know that his ways will be prospered in all things wherever he goeth until he return in Shalom to us and we see him in Shalom. Fear not on his account, my sister, for he is on the upright path and he is perfect. He is a perfect man mm -hmm. and he is faithful and he will not perish. Mm -hmm. Weep not. And Isaac comforted Rebekah on account of her son, Jacob. So he, called, him. he called him perfect. Interesting. Okay. So here's another confirmation that um, uh, not only Jacob, but also his sons will be blessed. Let's keep going. 19. And Jacob went from the well of the oath to go to Haran on the first year of the second week in the 40th, fourth Jubilee. And he came to Luz on the mountains and in Bethel on the new moon of the first month of this week. Mm -hmm. And he came to the place at even and turned away from the way to the west of the road that night. And he slept there for the sun had set. He took one of the stones of that place and laid it at his head under the tree. And he was and he was journeying alone and he slept. Real quick, y'all remember Haran coming up in the study we did on the wilderness? Not really. No. Haran was one of those areas. Really? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Go ahead. I'm going to show it to you after you get through 25. Okay. And he dreamt that night, and behold, a ladder sat up on the earth, and the top of it reached to heaven. Mm -hmm. And behold, the angels of Yahuwah ascended and descended on it. Mm -hmm. And behold, the master stood upon it. Mm -hmm. And he spoke to Jacob and said, I am the master, power of Abraham, thy father, and the power of Isaac. The land where you are sleeping to thee will I give it. Mm -hmm. and to thy seed after thee. And thy seed shall be as the dust of the earth, and thou shalt increase to the west, and to the east, and to the north, and to the south. And in thee and in thy seed shall all the families of the nations be blessed. Mm -hmm. And behold, I will be with thee, and I will keep thee wheresoever thou goest, and I will bring thee again into this land in Shalom. For I will not leave thee until I do everything that I told thee. Of. Mm -hmm. And Jacob awoke from his sleep and he said, Truly, this place is the house of the master. And mm -hmm. I knew it not. And he was afraid and said, Dreadful is this place, which is none other than the house of Yahuwah. And this is the gate of heaven. Okay, pause for a second right there. I just want to try to think about this. Every time I read this, I, I have the same thought. And, and you can agree or disagree. I, I just want to lay it out for you as my thought is seen. Jacob is laying on the ground. You with me? Jacob is laying on the ground. I'm Jacob laying on the ground. My head is on the rock. Behind me is the rock and the ground. I'm looking up in front of me at a ladder ascending into the heavens. And angels coming and going on that ladder. If you were looking at a ladder ascending up into the heavens from where you at, and it starts wider than your head, mm -hmm. the further it gets up into the heavens, it would become what? A pyramid. Narrower, right? Or like a pyramid. Mm -hmm. And when he comes out of this vision, this dream, he says, truly, this is the house of Yahuwah. But then he also says, this is the gate of heaven. Mm -hmm. In my mind, in my mind, when people begin to build those pyramid structures, especially in the places that they're building them in, 
I believe they were building them with the mindset that these would be portals or gates to access this other dimension, the spiritual dimension, and to allow the passing of spiritual entities mm -hmm. to come back and forth. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I believe that in reading what Jacob saw, what we refer to as Jacob's ladder, we use the word ladder because it says they were ascending and descending. Mm -hmm. But if you just think about that in your mind's eye, so to speak, it would look like a pyramid. Mm -hmm. And so I think that that's where they get the, the usage of those structures from, mm -hmm. on, a, on a base level, at least. Um, whether they actually opening gates and spiritual doorways, that's another story. I believe some of them are. I believe some of them are. Um, why are they all over the earth? Middle East, Africa, America, South America, because these stories are known all over the world, I believe. Why do certain people go to these pyramids and come out a different person? Why, exactly. Become a spiritually possessed, mm -hmm. I believe. Alistair Crowley, Beyonce, mm -hmm. a lot of people. A lot of people. A lot of people say they have to make this pilgrimage to the pyramids of Giza and so on and so forth in order to in order to transition themselves into the next phase of their fame, fortune, superstardom, mm -hmm. what 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 have you, right? Just something to think about. Food for thought. Genesis 28. The book of Genesis, chapter 28. Now the righteous understanding of that was Jacob said, this must be the house of Yah on earth. We're going to read what else he says right here. I'm not going to spoil it. 28 verses 18 through 22. Okay. Whenever you're ready. And Jacob rose early in the morning and took the stone that he had put at his head, set it up as a standing column, and poured oil on top of it. Mm. And he called the name of that place Bethel. Mm -hmm. However, the name of this city had been Lux previously. Mm -hmm. And Jacob made a vow saying, seeing Yahuwah is with me and has kept me in this way that I am going and has given me bread to eat and a garment to put on. When I have returned to my father's house in Shalom and Yahuwah has been my power. Then this stone, which I have set as a standing column, shall be Elohim's house. Mm. And all that you give me, I shall certainly give a tent to you. What you say? <laughs> what you say? So now after I go and do what I'm on the mission to do when I come back, I want to I wanna recognize this as a marker and set it up as a house to Yahuwah. When we had that conversation about is the, is the house of Yah any given corner that you decide to put a church on? Or is there a specific place that the Most High designates himself and says, in this place I put my name? Or, to take it even further, in these people I put my name. It's two different levels to that, understanding. Okay, so uh, he was given an understanding that there was something about this specific place on the geographical plane of this earth that was special that maybe was set apart. Like when that Malachim spoke to Joshua, right? Uh, let me show you this real quick. Let me see if I can switch my screen share. Um, try this. Kulti, I got you, give me one second. So, can you guys see that? Let's start. Yep. Okay. okay, beautiful. So, we read in the book of Joshua in our weekly uh, study of scripture series about Joshua taking Ai. Right? Ai. You see it here on the map. It is north of uh, Jerusalem and just north of Jericho. Okay? Now let me show you another one. Here's the Jordan River. It says you had to cross over the Wadi 
and all over to Jordan. This is what he was talking about crossing over. Here's Lakish. We read about Lakish last night. Here's Eglon. Here's Hebron. Here's Gilgal. This is the land that in those days was called Canaan before it was called what? Israel, right? Okay, hallelujah. Let me show you another one. Oh, shoot. I can not from there. Okay. Slide number two here. So here you've got that same body of water toward the top. Here you've got Jerusalem again. Is my screen sharing now? Mm -hmm. Good. Here's Bethlehem. Here's the land that Benjamin occupied. What's this here? Ai again. Mm -hmm. Jericho. And so there's what we read as what? Beth. Bethel. So Ai that we read about Joshua and the and the Israelites taking and Bethel is right there in the same place. Mm -hmm. There's something special about that land. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let me read this to you real quick. I'm going to read you something from uh, Britannica, from the Encyclopedia of Britannica. All right, can you guys see that? Should say Bethel at the top. Let me know when you see. Okay, hallelujah. Bethel. This is what um, Jacob called that place. Bethel. Okay. Ancient city of Palestine located just north of Jerusalem or Yerushalayim. We just saw it on the map, right? Originally called Lutz. Okay. That's in agreement with what scripture just said. And in modern times, Bay 10. Bethel was important in the Old Testament times and was frequently associated with Abraham and Jacob. Excavations, what's that called? Archaeology? Mm -hmm. Excavations carried out by the American School of Oriental Research and the Pittsburgh Xenia Theological Seminary suggest that Bethel may have been the actual scene of the events described in the Old Testament as having taken place at Ai during the Israelite conquest of Canaan. That's what we just read about. We're talking about Joshua. Okay, beautiful. After the division of Israel, where Judah, Benjamin, Levi separated from the rest of the 10 tribes, Jeroboam, we were just talked about this last night, in the 10th century BC, made Bethel the chief sanctuary of the northern kingdom, Israel. And the city was later the center for the prophetic ministry of Amos. The city apparently escaped destruction by the Assyrians at the time of the fall of Samaria, 721 BC. But it was occupied by Josiah of Judah or Josiah of Yehuda. Okay? Just some extra information to share with y'all there. Yeah. Just to let it, you know, tumble around in your mind. As we read and you get all of these other pieces of information and you kind of pull it all together to paint a bigger and more clear picture. Does that make sense? Okay. Uh, Akoti Latasha, was that your hand up? You want to come to the mic? No, I was just going to ask, do you think that they was building those pyramids to try to find that gateway, to maybe try to find that portal to go back up and ascend back up into the heavens? And they probably, that's why they was building those portals? Yeah, I do. Where's Mesopotamia? He's on the way to Mesopotamia now, right? Mm -hmm. To meet with, with uh, Rebecca, right. Rebecca's brother, Levan. Where's Mesopotamia? That's the area that we call Samaria. That's the area that historians refer to as the cradle of life. That's also the area that Nimrod ruled and occupied. What was Nimrod building with the Tower of Babel? The Tower of Babel, trying to reach the heavens, right? Same spirit is what I'm saying. Those that, I'm not talking about Jacob, I'm talking about those that try to replicate that in order to gain entry into the heavens or in order to create a 
uh, gate for entities that shouldn't be here to come here or entities that are coming here illegal, the real illegal aliens, uh, yeah, they operate in that same sphere, I believe. Yeah. Okay, let's look at uh, Jacob and the birth of the 12 patriarchs. So when we say the 12 patriarchs family, we're talking about the founding fathers of the nation of Israel, the founding fathers of the nation that became also referred to as Israel, okay? Let's go Genesis 29. We're going to read verses. Uh, let's start off with one through. Oh, we're going to read Genesis 29. <laughs> yeah, Genesis 29. Let's, we're going one through 30 to begin with. Um, whatever you want. And Jacob moved on and came to the land of the people of the east. Okay. And he looked and he saw a well in the field and saw three flocks of sheep lying by it. For out of that well, they watered the flocks and a large stone was on the well's mouth. And all the flocks would be gathered there. Then they would roll the stone from the well's mouth and water the sheep. And then they'll put the stone back in place on the well's mouth. So Jacob said to them, my brothers, where are you from? And they said, we are from Haran. Interesting. And he said to them, do you know Laban, son of Nahor? And they said, we know him. And he said, is he well? He doing all right. <laughs> and they said, yeah, he doing good. And see, there is, there is his daughter, Rachel, is coming with the sheep. Mm -hmm. And he said, see, it is still high day. Not the time for the livestock to be gathered. Together. Water the sheep and go and feed them. He's telling them what to do. <laughs> but they said, we are not allowed until all the flocks are gathered together. And they have rolled the stone from the whale's mouth. Then we shall water the sheep. Mm -hmm. While he was still speaking with them, Rachel came with her father's sheep. For she was a shepherdess. Mm. And it came to be when Jacob saw Rachel, the daughter of Laban, his mother's brother, and the sheep of Laban, his mother's brother, that Jacob went near and rolled the stone from the whale's mouth and watered the flock of Laban, his mother's brother. Pause for a second. We're in Genesis 29 and 10. She just finished 10. Jacob, man. Jacob, whereas they rolled that stone together, Jacob rolled that stone by himself. By Say, himself. First of all, what y'all doing? It ain't time for the sheep to be gathered together. It's time. To, look, get them sheep over here. Let's water them sheep. Right, right. He gave, he gave a big man. <laughs> <laughs> then Jacob went and rolled that stone away for Rachel to see. <laughs> right. And told her, come on, let's get these sheep watered. Right. Okay, then what happens? Look, this stone right here. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, 11. And then Jacob kissed Rachel uh -huh. and lifted up his voice and wept. And when Jacob told Rachel that he was her father's relative and that he was uh, Ripai's son, she ran and told her father. So he said, I'm your kinfolk. Girl, it's me. It's <laughs> y'all have been at the old family reunions with your, your older uncles and cousins. Yeah, yeah what, 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 uncle, what Uncle Russell say? Yeah, uh, uh, now, who baby is you? Who baby? <laughs> my neck, my neck, squeeze me hard. You know you got to watch the monkeys and the cousins. Well, that's what he said. He told him, "Say I'm your kid for." Where your, where your father? At? He was so aggressive. She ran. She ran and told a cousin here. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, then what happened? Okay, so then uh, it came to be when Laban heard the report about Jacob and his sister's son. That he ran out to meet him and he embraced him and kissed him and brought him into the house. Okay. Then he told the man all these matters. So this was not a strange thing in those days. This was not a strange custom. It, it was not uh, looked at back then as it is today in American society. Um, for um, And first of all, it didn't say like he kissed on the lips. Let's right. be clear. It didn't say that. It's, 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 he embraced her. It's the cheap kiss. Yeah, you know, he embraced her. He hugged her. Yeah, that's that's all it's saying. I know we 
we kind of plan it up because we know where this leads to. And we know that he fell madly in love with her. But, you know, it, it, a little bit in jest. But, um, yeah, it, it wasn't indecent. Okay, go ahead. Um, and then Laban said to him, you are indeed my bone and my flesh. Mm -hmm. And he stayed with him for a new moon. So he stayed with him a month. So after a month, the band looks up and he's, he's asking him what? Go ahead, 15. He said, because you are my relative, should you therefore serve me for nothing? Mm -hmm. Let me know. What should your wages be? So when he says he stayed with him for a month, it's not saying he just laid up. He was actually there working. He was actually Earth. helping him with his animals and with his uh, land and with his house and with his home and all that. Mm -hmm. He was there working. So he said, look, nephew... Yeah. But but you got to watch Levan, because remember Levan is the same one that when uh, when Abraham sent Eleazar to 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 get his sister for Abraham to marry, um, Levan didn't want to let his sister go. Like he said he was going to let her go, but he kept telling him, "Well, just hold off, just stay a little long. Well, just hold off." And finally, Eleazar was like, "Look, let me go. If 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 it's okay, let me go." I think Laban may have, because see, Rachel was a shepherdess, so his daughters was was herding his flock. And so I think Laban just was kind of thirsty for male, you know. Laban didn't daughter. have any sons. Right. Laban also, at the time that Abraham sent Eleazar to him, Laban was the man of his house. Right. At a young age. At a young right? age. His yeah. mother was still alive, mm -hmm. but Laban was the man of the house. And so it was his duty to watch over his sisters, and that was his duty to watch over his brothers. And it's still just him. He got service and stuff, yeah. but Laban is the man of his house. Yeah. So, yeah, he, he trying to make sure everything is this. But I'm, I, we saying all that, Laban also is... Crooked is, crooked is, let it I, I, I ain't gonna call him crooked, but he, <laughs> you know... He ain't right. He, 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 he known for doing some willing and dealing. Oh, yeah. Yeah. He so, a fast talk. Yeah, so let's read about it. Okay. Um, 15. Then Laban says to Jacob, because you are my relative, should you therefore serve me for nothing? Uh -huh. Let me know what you should your wages be. And Laban had two daughters. The name of the elder was Leah, and the name of the younger was Rachel. Mm -hmm. And Leah's eyes were weak, but Rachel was beautiful of form and beautiful of appearance. To your, to your understanding, what does it mean when it says Leah's eyes were weak. What? She I'm asking. Cried. I'm asking your mom. Maybe she needs to wear glasses. Was she cross eyed? Did you say she? What you think? She probably had an easy eye. I think. I think it means she probably. You said cross eyed. Same difference. Yeah. I think it probably means she had like a lazy eye or maybe two lazy eyes. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Um, but it says her eyes were weak. It doesn't say she was ugly, yeah. but it says her eyes were weak, and thus. Yeah. He thought Rachel was the more beautiful daughter. Yeah. You know, she, you just, you never knew who Leah was talking to, you know, <laughs> and that could be off putting to some people, you know what I'm saying? Wait, was you talking to me? Yeah. Okay. Real big funny. All right, let's go. Come on. Um, that's our mother. You can't talk about Leah like that. No, nah, I mean, I mean, that's our foremother. No, I mean, very respectful. That's their mother. No, it sounds like hers may have been severe. Yeah, well, yeah. Let's 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 move on. <laughs> no, it says his eyes were dim. All right. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Leah, we love you, mama. Verse 18. <laughs> okay. Uh, so you know, but Jacob loved Rachel, mm -hmm. so he said, let me serve you seven years for Rachel, your younger daughter. Mm -hmm. And the band said, it is better that I give her to you than I should give her to another man. You might as well give her to you. I know you. You can't fall. I know your mom in there. I know your pops. He good people. Good people. I know your pops' pops. Yeah. You got the Abraham money? You got yeah, that. I know. Boy, I got know. Abraham money? I know. Yeah. yeah. Go ahead. Uh, stay with me. So Jacob served him seven years for Rachel, mm -hmm. and they seemed and they seemed to him but a few days because of the love he had for so her. So it was nothing. He worked seven years 
He worked seven years to pay her bride price, and it was nothing to him. Go ahead. Then Jacob said to Laban, give me my wife, for my days are completed, and let me go into her. Okay, and Laban said, okay, no problem. And Laban gathered all the men of the place and made a feast. Uh-huh. And it came to me in the evening that he took Leah, his daughter, and brought her to Jacob, mm. and he went into her. So, I don't know. I know my children here, but what that means is they consummated the, the marriage. Um, so, Jacob thought he was entering into a physical covenant at that point with Rachel, but he was actually entering into a physical covenant with Leah. Mm -hmm. huh? Was he like, well, they did have a feast. Yeah. And so, so, the, so the wedding party usually lasted, you know, a week. Um, I think I think don't Jasha say like LeBan pumped him pumped Jacob full of drink. Well, I mean you probably didn't have to pump too hard. They was yeah. they were celebrating the wedding. Yeah, you know. Yeah. So um, yeah, uh, so it's possible. You know he was he was fairly toasty, feeling good, feeling good, and he finally got his wife. So and it was her sister. So you know they probably looked very similar. Probably built like, probably built very similar. Twins. <laughs> It's possible. Okay, let's go. Okay. Um. And Laban gave. Oh wait, wait. And it came to be in the evening. He brought Jacob. Okay. And Laban gave his female servant Zilpha and his daughter Leah as a female servant. So Zilpha was Laban's servant, but he gave her to Leah to be her servant as part of his wedding gift. Go ahead. And in the morning, it came to be that see it was Leah. So he said to Laban. What is this you've done to me? Uh, Was it not for Rachel that I served you? Mm. Why then have you deceived me? And Laban said, it is not done this way in our place mm. to give the younger before the firstborn. Now, I didn't talk to you about that for whatever reason beforehand. I just slipped it in on you under the cover of night. But if it wasn't traditionally done that way, shouldn't he have just said something in the first place? He would, yeah. But you know, again... Jacob was concerned about the de the mischievous way in which he went to his father. Yep. This might have been part of his some payback. You know what I'm saying? What I'm saying like I, I, what happened happened, family. Yep. Yes, it was already said that Jacob should be the one that was blessed, but the way they went about it, it's very possible that some of this is because of that. It's a little payback. But Yah knows all things, and all things work to the good for those who believe in Him. So I mean, it is what it is. Okay, so he tells them in verse twenty-seven what. He said, I, I, I got you. I tell you what. Mm -hmm. Complete the week of this one. The week means complete another seven years. Then we give you, then we give you this one too. Uh-huh. For the service which you shall serve with me till another seven years. I apologize. I apologize. Complete the week means we're going to finish the ceremony for this one. Yeah. It's usually a week-long ceremony. And then you serve another seven years, and you get the one you really want. Which was right. <laughs> and he, he talking to them. He talking about them like they just luggage. Complete the week for this one. They they making a deal. Willing to do. Um. And Jacob did so and completed her week. Okay. Then he gave him his daughter Rachel too as a wife. Okay. And Laban gave his female servant Bilha to his daughter Rachel uh -huh. as a female servant. And he also went into Rachel, and he also loved Rachel more than Leah. And he served with Laban still another seven years. Beautiful. So now you got under Jacob's house. Now you got Rachel, who he loved, Leah, who he got as a package deal, but also Zilpa and Bilha, who were their two servants. So let's see how we get to these 12 patriarchs. Leah actually bears the first four sons. So let's go 29, 31 through 35. Hey, y'all, make a note. If you ever want to understand how this, how this lineage breaks down, this is how it breaks down, okay? Go ahead. And Yahuwah saw that Leah was unloved, and he opened her womb. But wait, Rachel was barren. Uh -huh. And Leah conceived and bore a son, and she called his name Reuben. Okay. For she said, for Yahuwah has looked on my affliction, because now my husband is going to love me. Uh -huh. 
Poor baby. <laughs> and she conceived and again and bore a son and said, because Yahuwah has heard that I am unloved, he gave me this son too. Mm -hmm. And she called his name Shimon. Mm -hmm. Simeon or Shimon Simeon. or Simon. Some people say Simon. Mm -hmm. But it's the same name. So this was Simeon. Go ahead. And she conceived again <laughs> and bore a son and said, now this time for sure my husband no, now this time my husband is joined to me uh -huh. because I have borne him three sons. Uh -huh. So his name, she called him Levi. All right. And she conceived again and bore a son and said, now I praise Yahuwah. Uh -huh. So she called his name Yehuda, and she ceased bearing. Now I'm going to ask a question, and this is rhetorical. Coates, don't, don't bum rush me. You can come to the mic after we finish this if you want to and comment on it. What is it about this occulty that she's steady saying this man don't love her and now he'll love me like he ain't still sleeping with her? There's, there's something, listen, he got two wives. That's the point. He got two wives. He obviously liked Leah some. Some must be right up. He liked her somewhat. Because she's steady popping these children out. Mm -hmm. None of these children were uh, conceived uh, immaculately. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. come on. I don't know. There's a, but it, Rachel was something else. Rachel was something else. Rachel, Rachel was not a good person. Rachel was not a good person. And Rachel but that's was, the one he loved most. That's the one, you know. And I, and I get it. It says that she felt that. I get it. And this is why, in all honesty... This is why in, in once you get to uh, Torah, there is a law of if you have multiple wives, you cannot love one wife more than the other. You cannot provide for one wife more than the other. You can't leave one wife raggedy and, and, and in a hut while you run off with the wife that you really want to be on Instagram with and, and, and you're doing all of your living your best life. But, but you steady popping children and you send children back to the other wife <laughs> that's in the hut and say, you take care of the children, we gonna and You know, Rachel say that Leah was popping them kids because she had them love out. Let's see. Uh, let's go ahead to uh, Genesis 30. Okay. We're going to read 1 through 8. Okay. I think that's where we're at. And when Rachel yeah. saw that she bore Jacob no children, Rachel envied her sister. Uh-huh. And she said to Jacob, give me children or else I'm going to die. Mm -hmm. And Jacob's displeasure burns against Rachel. He said, am I in the place of Elohim uh -huh. who has withheld from you the fruit of the womb? I've had to say stuff like that to my wife sometimes. I'm, I'm, am I? Yeah? I can't you. Oh, I thought you I thought you said I asked you for more children. After this no, day. no, <laughs> no. But I'm just saying about certain things, you know. Yeah. You know. I'm not y'all. You, you can't get upset with me about this. This is y'all's will. This happens mm -hmm. in y'all's time. Mm -hmm. But that's what he's telling her. Go ahead. And she said, see my female servant, Belha, go to her and let her bear for me uh -huh. and let me be built up from her as well. Okay. So she gave him Bilha, his fe her female servant, as a wife. As a what? As a wife. This is his wife. This is now wife number three. Go ahead. And Jacob went into her. And Bilhah conceived and bore Jacob a son. Uh -huh. And Rachel said, Elohim has rightfully ruled my case and also heard my voice and given me a son. And she called his name Dan. Mm -hmm. And Rachel's female servant, Bilhah, conceived again and bore Jacob a second son. Mm -hmm. And Rachel said, with great wrestlings, I have wrestled with my sister, and I have overcome. So she called his name Natalia. All right. So now you got Dan and Natalia. Let's move on to uh, 9 through 13. Whenever you're ready. And Leah saw that she had ceased bearing, and she took Zilpah, her female servant, and gave her to Jacob as a wife. Mm -hmm. And Leah's female servant, Zilpah, bore Jacob a son. And Leah said, with Gad, so she called his name Gad. 
Mm-hmm. And Leah's female servant Zilpah bore Jacob a second son. And Leah said, I am blessed, for the daughter shall be blessed. For the daughter shall call me blessed. So she called his name Asher. Okay. So now we get to what Rhea was making a reference to. So now you got Gad and uh, Asher born by Zilpah, uh, who is in the place of now a fourth wife, mm-hmm. right? Okay, so now what happens with Reuben? Reuben just a little tight at this point. I'm going to go uh, 14. We're still in chapter 30 of Genesis, uh, 14 through 21. Go ahead. And Reuben went in those days of wheat harvest and found love apples in the field. What's a love apple? I don't think we have a definite definition, but in, in your research, what have, you, what have you estimated a love apple may have been? Uh, they actually said it was something mythical. I don't know about that. I don't know if I believe that. It's, it's got to be, it, it got to be something that, that makes women kind of fertile. So, Koti Kiki said mandrakes. I heard mandrakes as well. Yeah. I think you did too, right? I did. I heard, I heard, I heard it was actually mystical. Well, yeah, just because I heard that don't mean I believe that. So when when you say mystical, you take it out of the element of, in my opinion, reality. So there there are there are there are certain things, foods, drinks that promote um ovulation. Sometimes ovulation. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And sometimes um virility. Mm-hmm. within men and so this was obviously a fruit that they they believe to you know promote the coming together of loved ones mm-hmm. get you in the mood mm-hmm. this is what i do mm-hmm. yeah so that's what this was so <laughs> and so reuben is picking these these apples now as, a, as the children they just popping them just you know, they ain't even of that age. So what do they know? Right. They just picking picking these fruits and eating them, blah, 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 whatever. But um the parents is looking like, wait a minute, there's a deal to be made here. The reason the reason um so the reason they say they was kind of mystical is because um Ruben kind of went on a hunt to find these versus just like a mandrake would which would have grew abundantly. So it was a thing in which Rachel couldn't get a hold of them. So like if Rachel could have just sent her servants to get a hold of them, she wouldn't have had to make a deal with Leah. So the fact that yeah. she ended up having to make a deal with Leah I mean this was a this was a sought after thing. I that believe it was something that Reuben had a spot that he yeah. knew of yeah. that he knew where to get them. because it was a thing that Reuben often came up with these mandrakes or love apples or whatever. Um, so yeah, in that way, I just, I don't care for the word mystical when dealing with the Bible, but yeah, I get what you're saying. Okay. Um, but, uh, so, okay, so Reuben went in the days of the week and he found the love apples and Rachel said to Leah, please give me some of your son's love apples. Mm-hmm. But she said to her, is it a small matter that you have taken away my husband? Mm. Would you take away my son's love apples as well? Uh-huh. You just want everything, don't you, princess? <laughs> Therefore, let me lie with him tonight. Uh, no. Therefore, let him That's lie fine. with you tonight for your son's love apples. Uh-huh. And when Jacob came out of the field in the evening. Leah went out to meet him and said, do come in to me, for indeed I have hired you with my son's love apples. Uh And he lay with her that that was so messy, and he lay with her that night. Uh That was extremely messy. But this is is what's going on, y'all. This is like, these are sisters and sister wives. Now, again, when you come to Torah, Torah rectifies this later on and say, don't marry sisters. First of all. But even in the event that we're dealing with, you know, the legality of multiple wives, and, and I have to say this because um, there's, 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 this, there's this thing where as Israelites come into the truth, men, and especially young men, find out that 
having multiple wives is not a sin. And then that becomes, uh, let me wait for y'all to finish. I cannot concentrate without that point. Okay. Um, that becomes then their only focus, right? And um, what, what I often say in these conversations that I'm having with the brothers is like, to me, that's a young man's game. That's a young man's mindset. As a young man, you think it to yourself, let's just be honest, um, you know, the more the merrier. Um, if she in a bad mood, she not going to be in a bad mood. If she in a bad mood, she not going to be in a bad mood. But what about when they all in a bad mood? Like, it's more than a notion having a wife. Add multiple on, and you got multiple of everything that goes along with that. You need to provide, according to the law, equally. Um, you need to uh, care for, but you also have to deal with. And we don't see any example in Scripture where this goes as smoothly as what people are telling you is, is it can go. People are trying to sell you this idea. And look, if that's what you want, that's what you do, that's what you do, whatever. All I'm saying is, um, and, I, and what I tell my sons, I don't see it go smoothly for anybody. Not name one. Yeah, it's legal, but I don't see it go smoothly. So I don't know. Uh, do with that information as you will. So, now they arguing over uh, this man and treating him like a piece of meat and he don't know which way to go. I'm sure he all kind of tore up inside. <laughs> what what else happens now? Um, and you will listen to Leah mm -hmm. and she conceived and bore Jacob a fifth son. And Leah said, power has given me my hire because I have given, because I have given my female servant to my husband. So she called his name Issachar. Issachar's born, okay. Hallelujah. And Leah conceived again and bore Jacob a sixth son. Mm -hmm. and, Leah, and Leah said, Yahuwah has presented me with a good present. Mm -hmm. Now my husband is going to dwell with me because I have borne him six sons. Now he's going to come live with me, huh? That's what she thought. Okay. Oh, baby. So she called his name Zebulon. Okay. And afterwards, she bought a daughter and called her name Dina. I don't know. I don't. I don't think that Jacob didn't like her as much as she thought. Seemed like Jacob liked her pretty well to me. Maybe so. Maybe Rachel, although she was pretty, he kept saying, "You're gonna keep on bickering with me. I'll tell you what. I'll talk to you tomorrow. It, I'll be in consistent house." She was worded. It's worded what Rachel says. Okay, give me a love apple, and I'll let you see the husband for a little while. So that's the thing where Rachel knew she was beautiful. Mm -hmm. She knew the power she held over Jacob. Mm -hmm. And it was one of the things where, you know, every other day, it was, you gonna be with me? You, are you gonna go stay with her? Oh, you know what I'm saying? And he probably only went to her when they was arguing. You know, like, I ain't gotta take this. That's so what I just said. And, 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 and he didn't care for it either. He obviously told her, he, we read that it said uh, his displeasure burned against her mm -hmm. for her attitude and, for, and for her quick temperedness. He probably stayed with Leah that night. But yeah. if Rachel was on good behavior, then he was with her. And she probably, you know, did all the little tricks or whatever to get him to stay with her. But Paul, but Paul Leah felt neglected. You know, he won out. Rachel house. wasn't the only one there. There was Bill Club. There was there was Zilpa as well. He spent some time with them too. They each of them also had more than one son. Do you think Jacob divided his time evenly between his wives? Absolutely not. So now at this point, okay, twenty two to four twenty four. Um, and Yahuwah remember Rachel, and Yahuwah listened to her and opened her womb. Mm -hmm. And she conceived and bore a son and said, Elohim has taken away my reproach. Mm. So she called his name Joseph and said, Yahuwah has added me, added to me another son. Okay, hallelujah. So um, we have there, let me see if I can do something real quick. I'm going to try to pull up this last screen share if I can.
Um, no, I didn't let me do it. Yeah. Okay, it didn't let me do it. I, I had a try to use the whiteboard to just list those children and whose uh, mother they were. Leah had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven children. One, two, three. Reuben, Simeon, Levi, Judah, Issachar, Zebulon, and Dina all together. Bilha had Dan and Neftali, Zilpah had Gad and Asher, and Rachel had Joseph and Benjamin. We haven't read about Benjamin yet. But um, 12 sons and one daughter by four different mothers. That's the makeup of the nation of Israel. It just is what it is, fam. Right? So look, next week, um, we're going to close up there for this week. Next week, we're going to get into uh, Jacob when he says, okay, it's time for me to go and get up out of here. We're going to deal with him meeting Esau on the way out. And remember Esau waiting on him. Can't wait to get a hold of his brother. So we're going to deal with that. We're going to deal with Dina and Shechem. That's going to be interesting. And we're going to deal with um, Jacob's name being changed from Jacob to Israel officially. Okay. Uh, and I don't know, I say we're going to touch on the 12 patriarchs. I don't know if we're going to get to that next week because I think, honestly, if I'm being honest with y'all, if I dig into Dina and said, Chim, in, in, as, in as much detail as I would like to, just to really help underscore the, the, the attitudes of these brothers and how they operate it, I think that'll take up next week. And then after that, we're going to go into the 12 patriarchs. So that's it. We're going to close there for the day, family. Told I for uh, coming and joining us for the study. Hallelujah. All praise to Yahuwah and Yahusha. Uh, if there was understanding, I see y'all had a lot of comments, a lot of, a lot of funny uh, comments in here about my singing and whatnot. I don't claim to be a singer. But yeah, if y'all would like to come to the mic, Natasha is the first one up uh, with her hand. Feel free to comment, question. The floor is yours. Go ahead. No, I was just, when we was reading, I wanted to go back to Genesis 29 and uh -huh. 9, where it was talking about her being a shepherdess. So is that is that meaning that women can shepherd in and teach? Okay. Yes, she was absolutely a shepherd. She was absolutely a shepherd, uh, and I'm glad you pointed that out. Um being a shepherd was not a was not a man's job, so necessarily. Um, but then there's the other aspect of that is again, remember um uh Levan didn't have any sons. He had servants, but it was his choice to allow his daughter to be a shepherd. I have daughters and I and I feel the mindset. I feel like um certain things in this society that we live in, we we um appoint as being you know, a man's place or a woman's place. And it's not necessarily scriptural. So a lot of times we, we take the, the writings uh, of Paul where he says, um, man shall not wear what pertains to a woman and vice versa. I'm paraphrasing, of course. And we apply that to things that it's not necessarily applied to, okay? Um, it's speaking of authority first and foremost, right? But as far as teaching, women teach. Women are the first teachers that you that you ever meet when you come out of the womb. Your mother is your first teacher. So yes, right. women teach. Um, I was getting to that, yeah. Um, um, Aquila and Priscilla, um, right. they were teachers. Um, now he taught with his wife and that was probably smart because for her to be out there on her own, there might have become a misunderstanding somewhere with her being on her own as a teacher. So she had someone there to cover her. And um, if there needed to be righteous correction, it was righteous correction. Uh, Deborah was a prophet. I would say that as a prophet, she was correcting people and probably including men as well. She was a judge, absolutely. Her husband was around, if you read the book of Judges. Her husband was mm -hmm. around, but she was the judge. 
So there was something there, you know, to 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 read into. But yeah, good good observation, sis. She was definitely a, a shepherd. Okay. And then my last question is um when we were talking about Esau children being rooted out, so that means all of Esau children being rooted out, no, none of them can be um <clears throat> Can ask for repentance? No, I don't believe that. I believe that I believe that his lineage is getting rooted out because that's what it says in several places. Um, I'm, I can't speak to whether or not uh, uh, a child of Esau can to, can come to repentance. I believe they could, uh, but I believe that what it's saying is, um, as a whole, as a unit, mm. as a family unit, Esau is being rooted out. Yeah, I believe that there's probably uh, the ability. To for there to be exceptions to the rule based okay. on individuals uh coming to the truth. See Ruth and Moab. Yeah, Ruth was a Moabite, absolutely. Yeah. What is Oh no, I was gonna ask something about the um the 12 patriarchs when you were talking about Ishkar and he spoke about the apple, but you said he's gonna go into that next week, right? Or are we not going to go into that next week? We might get into that next week. It might be the week after next. We'll see. We're going to have to play it okay. by year. Yeah. So okay. it might be next week or the week after. Tentatively. Okay. Okay. Yeah, because I was going to ask about when he spoke about the apples and he 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 told his story on why he was there and why he was um so dedicated to Yah because of because of the apples and, and his Rachel. And I believe... Like um, Riv said, Jacob, even when it showed with Jacob, uh, when she finally had Joseph and the way he, the way he differentiated his children between Joseph and the other sons and the way he loved on Joseph, I believe he truly did love Rachel, but Rachel is, she was like these modern day women. Every time she got smart, he probably was like, I'm going to go sleep with your sister, my other wife. And then all of a sudden Leah popped up pregnant. That's yeah. how I think it happened. I don't know. Yeah, he he definitely loved Rachel the most. I I, I will concede that he definitely loved her the most. And that, and 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 I would agree with both of y'all. That that probably means he spent most of his time with her. But I will also, from the reading, I also get that just like you just said, uh, when when Rachel got on his nerves. And let's be honest, you know, um, first of all, I'm sure she got. On, I'm sure he got on her nerves too. I'm, I'm sure he got on all his wives' nerves. Um, as well. So let me just say that. I'm, I'm sure that the wives wasn't the only ones getting on somebody's nerves. But um, you know, sometimes it take it take more for one person to get on your nerves than someone else. And if he had several wives, I'm sure it probably took a little bit more for, for, for Rachel to get on his nerves than for his other wives because that was his favorite. Um, and the same thing with his children, like you say. He, he definitely showed um, uh, that he that he leaned toward Joseph and, and then Benjamin eventually more than his other other sons. Although he still he still acknowledged that each one of his sons um, had an area of expertise, and and he was good about you know this son does this well, this son does that well. But just as far as like loving on them. Like really loving him up and all that. Yeah, Joseph was Joseph was his, his little man. And you know what? I think um I think it's one of them things in which um it's a very human emotion. I, I think he never really looked at Leah as a real wife because he was tricked. Uh kind of like how Esau respects Jacob's right to the birthright. Mm -hmm. He felt like you use trickery to get it, so I don't really respect that. So, so that's a human emotion. I mean, you know, if somebody, if somebody tricked me into something, I can never really truly respect that. Mm. But what do children care about that? But do you think you feel like he tricked, or you feel like she? Do you feel like he felt like she tricked him or her father? No, it was her father. But can you imagine being somewhere for seven years? Not looking at her like that. Yeah. I mean, maybe because of the eyes or whatever may have you. And I'm sure he was kind to her, but he wasn't attracted to her. He didn't look at her as, 
you know, a lover, he probably started looking at her as a sister or something. You know what I'm saying? They probably joked. And, yeah. You know, he, he just never looked at her like that. Yeah. And then to wake up the, the morning of your wedding night thinking, you know, you with your wife and then you see you not, you know what I'm saying? You yeah. with somebody, a friend, you with your friend. You. you know what I mean? I, I, we we, we get into the into the area of opinions now. So so yeah. I just want to yeah. clarify yeah. that. Yeah. But I, I, I think I choose to believe that he grew to love her. Uh, the, and, I, and the reason I say that is because in his dealings with Rachel, especially some of the rape stuff Rachel does shit that she ain't did yet, I think he probably was confiding in Leah some of them times, like, your sister, your sister killing me. Could you talk to your sister? Your sister about to get us all messed up. I'm sure they developed some kind of ratio, but, but, but it was to the point where the children resented him and yeah. Benjamin. So all his all his firstborn sons, and it was to the point where there had to be a law enacted yes. going forward. Yeah. So yeah, it's something there. But it's now, with with our opinions, now say if he did confide into Leah, mm -hmm. so Leah, based because you could tell between the contention that Leah and Rachel had between each other, they were similar in attitudes. But maybe Leah was trying to be the opposite around Jacob because he came to Leah complaining about Rachel. It's possible. Now, do you she, think that she had to, she had to improvise? You know, women. You, gotta, <laughs> you know, if, okay. If Rachel the banger, you know what I'm saying? Then Leah definitely got to be the one that's kind of down to earth, kind of you know easy to talk to. Maybe she could cook real good. You know what I'm saying? She had to use. So Rachel ain't even trying to cook, huh? What? What? You know, Rachel like <laughs> had to use Rachel all banger, banger. You know what I'm saying? She said, I don't cook. Scripture say, you know, Jacob had to eventually lie about Rachel. Like, that's my sister. Like, they, this thing was repeated. Yeah. So Rachel was a stunner. All the fellas at the well was like, that's who got Rachel? He got Rachel? Rachel? That's why I kind of believe, I kind of agree with um, what Ak Shlomo said in the beginning about he might have spent more time with Leah because I think she was, she might have been kind of compensating for the fact that her father tricked him and that she knew about it. So I think she might've been more like his piece. Maybe. That's possible. And, and, and if you look at the way they were buried. Yeah. Yeah. And that's yeah. why I said we take all that into account and, and, it, and it kind of paints a picture. Again, this is, we're, we're speculating. We're being honest, we're speculating. Uh, but yeah, I think that, I think he grew to love her. I would like and to I'm not saying so. he didn't love Rachel because I think he still loved Rachel very much. Uh, but I think by the time Rachel died, I'm not saying he was saying good riddance for bad rubbish, but I, I think, I think that. Um, well, no, she died young. She died I at think birth she, with Benjamin, and he was tall. He was broke up. He was, but I think she had put him through the ring or two. Yeah. Okay. Uh, what else we got? Coach, you got something else? Your hands still up? Uh, no, I'm done. <laughs> All right. Told our family, looking forward to doing it all again next Friday, um, 8.30 p.m. Central. We're going to pick it up with the next part of our study in scripture series, Joshua uh, 13 through 15. And we will see y'all then. Love you all. Enjoy the rest of Shabbat. Nevertheless, I must confess. Yes, this is Project Wake Up Jacob. On the Sabbath, we rest and reflect upon his goodness. Because we are guided by the Rua Coco Dash. Yes, whenever I get dressed, yes, I'm dripping cold as fresh. Yes, this style fit me.